teacher to be such a blessing in my life. Teachers have the ability to change the world, one child at a time. I am 100% convinced that my teacher helped save my life. There she is. How are you? Set about right here. Her desk was right here. And uh, she would come from behind her desk, and this was her kingdom. This is where it all transpired. This is where she taught the disadvantaged kids, the special needs kids, to be great. Well, my first memory was actually having my dad bring me into the school. And my dad brings me into the school, and we walk in, and we're in this hallway. And we look to the right, and there's Miss Richie standing there. And we look at each other for probably three to four seconds. She comes up and she says, may I help you? And she looks down at me and she asks my dad, who is this handsome young man? I was, I was a challenging student uh, in, in a sense that I grew up in a foster care system. I was an abused kid, very introverted. So I was one of those uh, special needs kids. I was special, a special ed kid. And I was just a kid who needed a lot of attention. The, the, the fact that I taught kids and I knew he had problems, it, it really meant, meant something to me. You know, during those times, um, I had a lot of problems at home and I was carrying a lot of emotional baggage. He spent quite a bit of time with his head on his lap, on the desk. Miss Richie would come by and just kind of put her hand on my back and rub my back and tell me everything was going to be okay. But the most important thing that I remember that she told me was that one day I would grow up and I would be significant. And uh, it took a while for that to change. Because I didn't really believe that I was like other kids. I didn't believe that I could achieve like other kids. But the one thing that Miss Richie did for me was give me a sense of hope. Give me a sense that I could be more than I ever thought I could be. And I remember she said that in this classroom, in this space, it's our kingdom. And in the kingdom, you have kings, you have queens, and kings and queens are treated like royalty. And so she said every time we would come into class, we had to act like we were royalty, which in our mind, we thought that that was kind of crazy. But what she was doing was really building our self-esteem. Well, he got uh, confident. He raised his head. <laughs> And uh, we were making progress, you know. He, he could see that, that, that he was making progress. And, uh, and he responded to me. I don't know where I would have been if Miss Ritchie weren't in my life. Um, probably in jail, probably, maybe dead. Um, and just having her in my life, when I think about it now, it's just impactful because you never know the impact someone could have in your life until you finally realize just what they were able to do for you. So I, I, I don't know where I'd be. I would say I gained uh, as much as he did because it was like a little miracle. She gave me that for Christmas. Okay, okay, I was wondering if she painted that, but she didn't paint it, she no, just gave me that for Christmas. She was the first person who told me that I was significant. And for a little kid who had never been told that before, to have someone generally, generally tell you that you're significant, that was so life-changing for me. And it just put me on a whole different course emotionally and also mentally and educationally. The impact Mitch Ritchie had on my life has been absolutely phenomenal. Because of what she did for me, I became a professional speaker and trainer who travels across the nation speaking to tens of thousands of people within school systems, foster care agencies and corporations. Miss Ritchie is my inspiration. It's one of my highlights in my life. You know, it really is.
I've always been for the underdog. Yeah, it's because I really appreciate what you did. Yeah. And just um, the whole, you know, your whole life of service and, and believing in kids like me. Yeah. I don't know what else to say. It's just amazing, you know? It is. I would tell every teacher out there to yeah. never, yes. ever give up. Because you just never know. You never know the impact you're making in a kid's life. You never know that kid that you may think can't achieve or you may think can't make it could be the very one through what it is that you do. They could go out there and change the world. So I will tell every teacher to think big. I will tell every teacher to never give up on any kid and to truly understand that they are heroes. Because in my opinion, teachers are heroes. Be nice to them, you know. It it, they have no faith in themselves, and if you, you if you just smile at them or you know give them a, a boost now and then, uh, that would be so helpful. I'm proud of him. I really am. He's kept touch, and he's done a lot for me to remember the good times and that you know you did mean something to somebody. When I think about what she did for me, I don't know how I could ever repay her. I don't know the words to say, except I love you. And um, I sincerely mean that. I love him because he succeeded. I do. You are my hero. Oh. Bless your heart. You did. You turned out wonderful. Thank you. I have finished my story of Joan of Arc, that wonderful child, that sublime personality, that spirit which in one regard has had no peer and will have none. With Joan of Arc, love of country was more than a sentiment. It was a passion. She was the genius of patriotism. Love, mercy, charity, fortitude, war, peace, poetry, music, these may be symbolized as any shall prefer by figures of either sex and of any age. But a slender girl in her first young bloom with the martyr's crown upon her head and in her hand the sword that severed her country's bonds shall not this and no other stand for patriotism through all the ages until time shall end? It really is a beautiful book, isn't it? I hope you've all enjoyed it. All right, I have your papers here, your final team papers. And I would like to say, all in all, that each team did a marvelous job. Congratulations to all of you. I would like each team to pick up your paper on the way out. But before that, I just want to tell you, I have very much enjoyed our time together this year. And I wish each and every one of you all the best of luck as you enter high school next fall. Class dismissed. There you go. Very nice. In case you're wondering, Mary Clear and I went steady for five weeks. Her longest relationship to that point it was a torrid affair. Kissing became even more enjoyable when I discovered it was all right to breathe. This was just wonderful. Boys, you did a good job. Thank you, Mr. Simon. Thank you. And as for Mr. Simon? Wow, thank you, sir. 
Thank you, sir. I am as proud of you two boys as any students I've ever had. And I mean that. And I wish you both a wonderful summer and a wonderful life. What are you going to do now, Mr. Simon? Well, I'll find some place to teach, of course. I am a teacher. It's what I am. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Stanley. Goodbye, Andrew. Goodbye, sir. Thank you. Stanley and I lost touch when he moved away in our sophomore year in high school. I can assure you his suffering did not end in the eighth grade. Nevertheless, I know whatever hardships were thrust upon him, he handled them with dignity. As for me, well, I am a writer. That's what I am. And with my pen, I can create a world where brave men like Stanley Minor are exalted as the standard by which we all measure ourselves. A world where Karen Connor will fit the glass slipper. And Norman Grunmeyer is voted king of the prom. A world where the equation human dignity plus compassion equals peace. The last week of eighth grade was memorable for many reasons, not the least of which were those glorious makeout sessions with Mary. But knowing I would never see Mr. Simon again haunted me. There was still one question that had to be answered. so sorry, sir. It's okay. I'm glad you dropped by. Would you like a cup of tea? No, sir, thank you. I just wanted to ask you a question. My wife, yes. Mystery solved? Oh, uh, no, sir. Uh, well, yeah, I, I guess that too. Now have a seat. So, where is she? She passed away. 
19 years ago today, in fact. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, a little sappy, I'm afraid. As a writer, it would do you well to avoid melodrama in your work. I suppose I loved her too much. Does that help you, Andrew? No. Well, I, I mean, I don't care about that. That's not why I came. Oh, really? Well, you've got me intrigued. What is it? I just wanted to know. When you assigned me to work with Stanley, why'd you pick me? You, you said there was a reason. Well, I believe that life is about timing, opportunity, and choices. It was an opportunity at the right time for a wonderful young man like you to make the right choice. And I knew you weren't ready to do that, but I didn't want you to miss it. But how did you know it would work? How did you know that, that I could do it? I didn't. But sometimes you just need someone to tell you that you can. I'm not sure that I fully understood it then, but it did occur to me that somewhere in that marvelous pile of books Mr. Simon cherished, there was a manual called How to Be a Teacher, written by Mr. Simon. Now, how many times have I told you you have to use the wheel grooves as a guide to show where you left off? Here, I'll show you. No, no, no. What do you mean, no? I mean, I'm, I'm gonna finish the lawn, Dad. Uh, I'll go over it again and catch anything I missed. That's, that's just the way I do it. Once one way and then, and then another against the grain, like, like at the ballpark or, or, or like a checkerboard. I like to do it, Dad. I like to mow the lawn. I like the way it looks and smells, and I'm gonna finish it my way. Then once I'm done, if I've still left a spot, you can call me a jughead, but please, just let me finish. Okay. Fair enough.